of the things that was so rev so revolutionary and remarkable was the fa was the decision not to compensate the slave owners. Right. But there was not the decision to compensate the slaves, the enslaved people. Right. That uh, continues to resonate today. Well, it does, of course, and. Um, you know, the, same, the famous uh, phrase, 40 acres and a mule, the African Americans demanded land. Or, or One historian once wrote, I think this is true, the political revolution went forward, but the right. economic revolution was much more, you know, was sort of stymied. Um, and yes, Lincoln, uh, although Lincoln actually <laughs> did favor giving some compensation mm -hmm. to the former s slave owners, Congress, the cabinet, they all rejected that. Um, the liquidation of that immense amount of property. Slaves were human beings, but they also were property, and they represented by far the largest concentration of property in the country, and that was just liquidated. Mm. No compensation, no payment, nothing. That's a pretty radical act. Mm. Um, almost all the other emancipations in the Western Hemisphere, the owners got compensation, not here. France and Haiti. Haiti, even Haiti had to pay reparations to France for over a hundred years, you know? Um, but uh, not here. So that is uh, that was a significant shift. So, but what happened then to that demand? I mean, you hear it discussed. Tanahisi Coates' article about reparations got the kind of right. attention that it did because I think it's still such a potent demand. But what has happened to our to the connection between political power and economic power? Well, that's where Reconstruction is such a critical point, also, because you you might almost say that that's where those things went separated. Mm. That political equality went down one road, but economic equality did not. And so, the, in other words, the country adopted the idea that you can have political equality without economic mm. equality. But W.D. Du Bois, people like that kept on talking about oh, yeah. cooperation, Oh, the labor movement rejected that. The progressive movement insisted on what they called economic security, that you couldn't really have a democratic system with vast inequalities and many people lacking any economic security. FDR talked about this. That idea that you need an economic base. I mean, Roosevelt said at one point, you know, the the, using a word we don't use very much, the necessitous man, that is the person mm -hmm. who is needy, let's say, uh, is not free. It's not really free. You can have the right to vote, you're not a slave, but you're not free if you're economically dependent completely on someone else. Uh, so yeah, Tanahishi Coates is right. This issue is out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, the only, my only question about this, the, the way reparations are sometimes discussed nowadays, now Reconstruction was 150 years ago, obviously, and no one's given out 40 acres of, uh, certainly in Manhattan, you're not getting 40 acres in a mule. Forget about the mule, you know. <laughs> but um, sometimes the discussion of reparations, not in his writings, but in a lot of people, tends to leave you with the impression that the problem was a problem of 150 mm. years ago. Th there are, racism is being uh, implemented as we speak. Right. Uh, the face of racism today is not uh, a Klansman, really. It's not Bull Connor with his dogs. It's a banker in a three-piece suit at Wells Fargo Bank who is refusing to give, who is pushing blacks into subprime mortgages, which means they're going to lose their homes yeah. when whites don't. Um, you know, it's the governor of Michigan ignoring the fact that the largely black yeah. city of Flint is being poisoned by its own water supply so that the state can save a little bit of money. Um, so in other words, racism is, is part of our system even today. It is not just a question of reparations for something that happened in the past.